Another way we say from the Prophet, we see from the Prophet وسلم, is that the Prophet said, if you say this dua one time, so now is the easiest one, no additions to it. Just la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. That if a person was to say it one time, that it would ward off al-kasal, عند al-kasal, when a person is feeling lazy. So you're getting tired throughout the day, you're starting to slack off, you're yawning a lot, and you're starting to feel like you're not so productive. This is a dua that would energize a person once again. Okay? So subhanAllah, if a person just says this throughout the day as they start to feel, instead of just and I'm tired and I didn't have my caffeine today and whatever it is, right away program yourself. Of course you say A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, you say Astaghfirullah, but say La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir and it would ward off al-kasal, it would ward off laziness. Two more times that we find this. One, Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man ta'ara min al-layl whoever is disturbed or they wake up during their sleep so you know a nightmare woke you up obviously there's isti'adah uh, there's a person seeking refuge in Allah so these things are not um, in contradiction rather they are in addition a person wakes up at night for any reason though you have a hard time sleeping you have a crying baby you have you know it's raining hard outside the light is bothering you just something woke you up it's hot it's cold but the point is man ta'ara min al-layl is very encompassing in that regard you woke up in the middle of the night and a person says la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir wa subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Wallahu Akbar, Walla Hawla, Walla Quwata illa Billah. I actually want you to memorize this, inshaAllah ta'ala. Okay? Because this is easy to remember, inshaAllah. You woke up at night, you're having a hard time going back to sleep. Before you pick up your phone and say, let me scroll and just watch some videos or something like that, or start texting or catch up on messages. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulku lahu al hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. These are the phrases we always say. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever says this, in one narration he also added, Rabbi khfirli, O oh my Lord, forgive me. He said, thumma da'a ustajiba lahu. Whatever dua you make at that time, you will be answered. Okay? And he says, فَإِن تَوَضَّعَ وَصَلَّ قُبِلَتْ صَلَاتُ And if that person goes even further and he gets up and makes wudu and prays two rak'ahs, then their prayers are definitely accepted. So, subhanAllah, what do you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Ijaba, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for dua mustajab, answer du'as. So at that time, if you just wake up and you don't even get out of bed, but you say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And then say, Allahumma, and say what you want to say. Oh Allah, say what you want to say. The Prophet said, your dua will be accepted. And then if you get up and you make wudu and you pray, your tahajjud, your qiyam is certainly accepted as well. Right? And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, if I knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from me, sajdatan wahida, one sajda, al maut, I would wish to leave this world at that point. Because that's the value of an accepted prayer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet is saying, do this and your du'as and your prayer will certainly be accepted. So the next time you wake up at night, inshallah ta'ala, this is how you respond. The last thing is very common but still very profound. And I hope inshallah ta'ala, now with a fuller appreciation of this dhikr as a whole, the Prophet sallallahu says in a hadith from Salim uh, ibn Abdullah ibn Umar, that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said that the Prophet sallallahu said, whoever man qala hina yadkhulu suq whoever says upon entering the marketplace, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ وَهُوَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتُ بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ The Prophet ﷺ added one thing to this dua. 
Okay. So la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahul mulk wa lahul hamd. Yuhyi wa yumit. He gives life and he gives death. Wa huwa hayyun la yamut. And he is ever living and he does not die. Okay. So this is the only addition to the dua. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he is powerful or he has power over all things. The Prophet ﷺ says, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَلْفَ أَلْفِ حَسَنَةً Allah will write down for that person 1,000 by 1,000 hasanat, which is a million. The word million is not a real Arabic word. Okay, So, alf alf, a thousand times a thousand is a million. A million hasanat. وَمَحَا عَنْهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove from him. أَلْفَ أَلْفِ سَيِّئَةً And Allah will remove from him a million sins, a thousand by a thousand sins. وَبَنَا لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ And Allah will construct for that person a palace in paradise. This is upon entering into the suq, upon entering into the marketplace. Now, this hadith, if you look at this narration, again, it just sounds incredible. It's like, well, if that's the case, let me just spend my day going to the suq over and over again. Walk in, walk out, walk in, walk out, walk in, walk out until they call the police on me at Target, right? Let me just keep going in and out, saying the du'a. That's not the practice of the Salaf, right? To just go to the marketplace and go in and out because this is an incredible uh, narration. But the ulama mentioned many wisdoms for this. Number one, the Prophet says, أَحَبُّ الْبِلَادِ إِلَى اللَّهِ That the most beloved of places to Allah are, this is the easiest answer ever, the place you're sitting in right now, the masjid. These are the most beloved places on earth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most hated places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth are al aswaq are the marketplaces. Now, I could go into to further detail in that regard because there are, of course, places that are more exclusive to, to, to some of the fawahish, some of the evil that traditionally could be found in the marketplace but are now just entirely you know, places that are dedicated to that evil and that sin. So what, is, what does the hadith mean? The place where people are most likely to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the masjid. The place where people are least likely to remember Allah is when you get into the marketplace. And truly, subhanAllah, for those of you that have been to certain countries, or you, you might even be from those countries originally, the marketplace is a loud place. It's a place where immediately, right when you walk in, people start to bombard you. I mean, it's a very hard place to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, the traditional souq. Right? People are making all sorts of oaths. People are trying to throw whatever product in front of you and get you to that product. Right? So just imagine yourself as you walk into the souk. Now, obviously, you walk into the marketplace, it's quiet. Go get your shopping cart, no one's there um, to mess with you, except for maybe the, the store attendant who greets you as you walk in. Right? Or you do online shopping, which, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, let's have. Let's have hope in Allah that that counts too. As soon as you open your online shopping, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. And I'm not joking about that, by the way. Say it when you open your online marketplace. You know what? The least that could happen, the worst thing that could happen, is that you meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment, and you just get the reward of that du'a without du'a asuq, which we've already covered. Incredible form of dhikr, right? And maybe you would have had lots of du'a that has been unlocked to you, good of this world that's been unlocked to you as well. Now, why yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa hayyun la yamut? He gives life and he gives death and he is ever living and he does not die. Because when a person sees the dunya in front of them and they remind themselves, Allahumma la isha illa isha al-akhirah, oh Allah, there is no real life except for the life of the hereafter. Then that means that they're not allowing anything to distract them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're reminding yourself, يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ وَهُوَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ Where true life is and where death is. And who the actual giver of life, because you go to the marketplace to get something of this world. And some people find the meaning of life in products that they own. Right? So you're reminding yourself of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and what the value of this life is. So when a person enters into the marketplace and they say this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write down for them bi'idhnillahi ta'ala uh, a million hasanat removed from them a million sayyat, a million sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for them a palace in paradise how generous and merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala
Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku, so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.